the requirement in the tender document. And you seem to have missed my explanation. I did not say I traveled to see the partners after winning the tender. No. I went to see the partners first. Then we agreed to put a bid together with their balance sheets, with their profiles. Because a tender document is not just five pages. It's more than 1,000, 2,000 pages explaining how you're going to put the solar farm, which is then marked. And then they say, yes, this explanation is correct. These people can do it. So Chint did everything. All I required was my certificate of incorporation and who are our directors and a few things from the local company. But the whole submission was based on Chint Electric's credibility, balance sheet, and experience. Mr. Chairman, just on a point of order, uh, Chairman. Can I just answer the questions right through? No, uh, Chairman. Uh, just on a point of order, uh, Chairman. Okay. Okay. Yeah, on a point of order, just hold on. Yes, yeah, no. Thank you, Chairman. I think, like what uh, uh, Mr. Jiva just said, so can, can we safely say his company, Intertrack, was just a briefcase company? Can he, can he admit that? Because from what he's saying to us now, the major company was Shanti, whatever he's calling it. Intertrack was just a briefcase company. Intertrack had no experience, it had nothing to do with what was supposed to be done. So the whole idea was. Intertrack was just, he formed actually Intertrack specifically just as it being a briefcase company. Can you just verify that? I think, I think that that question has been asked by Honorable Joe. I think that he will respond to that. I think... Uh, my follow-up question before he passes there. My follow-up question is that, uh, Mr. Trivayo, can you admit here that you abused the privilege of being a local? Because you, your company was just a facilitating mm -hmm. company. You had nothing totally. So can we say you abused your privilege of being a local citizen to go and get people who have got money, who could come by their own, to come in and invest, and then you just benefit? And because the advantage and the disadvantage here is, if you are a local, you, told, you tell us that there's a discount that you are awarded. If it's not your local, he pays much more money. So the, 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 the country has actually lost money because you intermediate as a local and you get a discount which was supposed to be coming to your company if you had invested with your money. But that discount went to a foreigner who is, supposed, who is not supposed to benefit because he's not a local. Uh, thank, thank you for your question, I don't remember, but... This is normal practice. This is how tenders are participated. You have a local company that works with an international partner. There is no abuse whatsoever of being a local. But members, I, I think you have the power to invite the state procurement board, and I think some of these questions are directed to the state procurement board in terms of what criteria do they use in picking companies. We shall call the state procurement board to also respond to this. I think some questions are for the state procurement board. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was just continuing. Um, <laughs> His other question was that, are you related to the former first family? And did, was there any assistance from them to win? I'm not related to the former first family. And at no given time did they interfere or assist me. Tenders are awarded by the state procurement board. The first family does not and have no influence whatsoever in my respective view to the operations at State Procurement Board. Mr. Chivayo, you are prevaricating. Let me warn you. You say tenders are for the State Procurement Board. The question which you have not answered, you went to the Minister of Energy. And you still have not answered that question. And you cannot answer questions as and when you feel like answering them. The real issue which is sticking is how the tender was won. You went for a process you lost. You went to the minister. The minister went to cabinet. And it's not a secret that this, the former president, was no longer in control of this country. That's the reason why parliament...
impeached. He said the first lady was de facto. So the honorable member is going uh, to a legacy issue which we all know about that the former first lady was in control of government. And as a result, you had lunch with, with her. So that is where it is coming from. And uh, ministers were reporting to her, just like vice president going in with notepads. So that issue is critical for you to understand the background, why the member of parliament is asking that question, in that the first lady was the power of the government of Zimbabwe. So he knew having lunch or connections with them. Was it not to influence a decision of a cabinet? minister who then took your issue to cabinet I think this is where you need to really clarify to the committee at the end of the day uh, chairman uh, chairman uh, thank you. in Dubai uh, or the lunch in Dubai I think you are out of order I think let us stick to the core business thank you can you can you can you clarify those issues th th thank you mr. thank you mr. chairman I think uh, this august house is mixing up the tender that I eventually signed is not the same one that I'm saying was cancelled and then I went to the minister. After it was cancelled, it was then cancelled again after we failed to agree. I thought I explained that. So I'm not saying this one was lowest bidder to specification. No order, Mr. minister called. And Minister Mavire was 2013. This was now Minister Undenge when we signed so you're mixing up and then you are saying you went and you saw a cabinet minister after having lunch lunch was 2015 in dubai and then minister mavira was 2013 mr. so they are completely different mr. you're mr. just heading up something mr Sajifayo, i think it's it is important that you understand and where there is clarity i think this is emanating from the first tender which you lost if we had correctly you lost it and you went to the minister are they right or wrong in saying that? Yes or no? Yes. Thank you. So to me, this is where it's all starting from, that you lost the tender, you went to the minister and said, you're a son of the soil, why are you not given the tender? Yet there is a process which should be used in appealing if you're not happy. And you very well said there is the court process. And members of parliament are still asking, if there is a court process, why did you not follow the court process? Uh, litigation is always... There was a point of order, Honorable Mtayami. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My point of order, Mr. Chairman, I would kindly advise Mr. Chivai, through Mr. Chairman, if he can clarify as to whether what he means when he says honorable members of the August House, they're mixing up things. He has, he has to withdraw that. We, we are mixing, coming all the way to mix up things here. When you seek uh, clarity at any point, come through me and say, I think this is where you would want to more or less clarify. Members of Parliament feel uh, uh, totally insulted when you say to them, it's mixed issues. I think a better word next time could really fit uh, the, the course. Uh, my, my, my apologies, Chairman. I withdraw the statement. Thank you. Yeah. For clarity, I'm saying Minister Mavire was 2013. Minister Ondenge was there in 2015. So when they say you had the lunch in Dubai and then you came back to the minister who influenced the cabinet, they're completely different events with different timelines. That's what I, think, I was trying I think to get it to. is you who's making, mixing issues. Yeah. The first issue which you need okay, to respond can I, can I rather... to... No, no, hold on. Because we now need to be, to be on track. The first issue which we have dealt with is how you won the tender. Yes. We are on that. Yes. And the members of, of the committee are asking that the first one you said you lost. It's you who said it. Yes. But you then went to Minister Mavaire. Yes. And yet, when you lose the tender, it does not say you must go to the minister. It says you must follow the due process of going through the courts. And this is where the issue is. Because once that is cleared, then there is clarity in terms of moving to the next phase. Because without clearing that, there is due influence in whatever you got after that. That's really, in summary, that's really what uh, you must understand. 
show that there was no Jew influence, prove to this committee that you followed a Jew process like any normal citizen of this country. Because the question then arises, how many people also lost the tender? There were three companies, you said. So the other one lost and went home and probably went to court. So did that one equally go to the minister? That's the next question that we would then have to ask the minister when he comes before us. Because why then award the one that came to you which lost and not the other one that thing lost? So I think in a nutshell, that's really what you need to more or less zero on in how the tender was given to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I continue to answer the other questions I have written down, I'll just respond to that. There were three companies that were compliant Compliant in simple terms that they had passed the funding and technical specification. So ZTE, Intratrack, and the one that had been awarded number one. So the request was, since there are three companies that are both compliant on funding and technical, why can you not award the compliant companies? Because they are able to do the work and they have the experience. So the other three could have no chance because they were non-compliant. So the three that were compliant were then awarded. So whether ZTE went to the minister or also tried to lobby, or I, I, I won't comment for them, but I went to the minister because litigation is always a last resort. So I went to the minister, I, went, I wrote to the chief secretary, I wrote a letter to state procurement board chairman Kwaza and we went and we saw him and we explained to him. And he also understood and said, yes, I'll consult my principles because what you are saying makes a lot of sense. The deficit is 1,500 megawatts. What reason do we have not to award other compliant companies as long as they are willing to match the price of the lowest bidder that we awarded? So it was a question of I was trying my luck. I wasn't just going to give up after putting a lot of effort. I had spent outrageous amounts of money putting together the bid, going to China, going to Germany, teaming up with the partners. So on the issue of... Um... So you were, you were explaining still we need to be on course. These three companies go, three are non-compliance, they don't get, these three are compliant, that's fine. One of them wins, all right? All three, all, all three won. All three were awarded. All three won the Gwanda. Not Gwanda, Gwanda and, and Sugamini and Munyati. All three won. Yes. So when you went to the minister, you were going to minister to appeal on what? To say these three compliant, does it not, is it not feasible for you to award them because they are compliant, you know, looking at the issue of no, the, power the, shortage? The issue is this. You went to the minister. Yes. You went to the minister before you were awarded. Yes. Exactly. Yes. That's what the issue is. You went to the minister before you were awarded. Yes. So why go to the minister and avoid a due process which is there? Well, that was due process because I then wrote letters right to the minister, to the state procurement board, and to, to the chief secretary saying I was going to try and go to court, but once I go to court, it would then stop the one who has been awarded until my determination of my legal battle. So in the interest of everybody's time, what was the basis? If I go to court... I, I don't know. Are you aware that we are now getting the chief secretary to come here to this committee and respond? So we are taking note of all this. So the chief secretary can now work outside the state procurement board. So the question is, what is the purpose of the state procurement board? if we have executives interfering. And the whole point of the state procurement board is for fairness. But if, if you're now naming these people, clearly illustrates there was undue influence to you being awarded that. You've spoken about the Minister of Energy, you've spoken about the Chief Secretary to the Cabinet, you've spoken about equally writing to the Chairman of the state procurement board, yet already a decision has been made instead of you going to court. So I, I want you to understand that whole process. All these names that you're bringing in will be brought before this committee to ask them what powers do they have in terms of the functions of the State Procurement Board. I hope you are taking note of that. Indeed, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for, for, for that. <clears throat> I wrote letters 
to the chief secretary and the response came signed by the deputy chief must have been look the one who was in charge of Zimaset cluster but i've got all the responses and if this house would like to see them and the letters i wrote to make a follow-up that is very possible so in summary what did those the thing response when you wrote what was the response the response from the from the chief secretary said that uh, we are we are aware we, we we confirmed receipt of your it copied the state procurement board we are in receipt of your letter talking about power and we recommend that wherever necessary and possible uh, the country needs more power to ameliorate the energy shortages that the country is facing please find a way to resolve this without having to delay national projects. And that was it. Resolve what? <laughs> so the chief secretary to the president and cabinet. The deputy uh, chief, that is the one who then responded, was wrote the judge of that letter. Yes. Can, we, can, we get, uh, can we get the letters you wrote and the responses yeah, yeah. to okay. this committee? When, can you th when do you think we can get that? I'll just look for them and then I'll... I'll, 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 I'll we you. need to... Uh, Time frame. Can we get those? When can we get those? I'll go and start looking for them, yes. We still, you're not still giving us a time. I think by the end of the week, I should have found them. Thank you very much. It. Okay. So, this was the. So, the question I was responding to are you related to the former first family? I'm not related to them. Then the next question says you formed Intertrek in 2012. A year later, I signed a contract with a year experience. It was not about... So the other question you missed out from Honorable Ndewele is that what are your qualifications? I have no qualifications. I'm not an engineer. Mm -hmm. I, was, I just run the company on based on experience. No, he has just responded the, to the question of what qualifications do you hold? You have no qualifications. That's fine. You have responded to that. You may proceed. You formed this company in 2012 and a year later you signed a contract without experience. The experience that was looked at and the evaluation criteria was Chint Electric and not me. So the issues of the local company were neither here nor there. They were, they were not important. What they wanted was an EPC contractor who can install a 100 megawatt solar farm and Chint Electric was the ideal. Was this company registered for this tender only? We registered, I registered a company and decided to venture into power generation and participate in tenders. So I participated in other tenders that we also won, some a lot that we've lost. So, so in terms of the tenders which you've participated in, before this tender you won, were there any other tenders that you won involving this sort of business? Uh, similarly, yes, but during more or less during the same period, and we also lost many as well. You're not answering my question. If the tender was given today, yes. Okay. What I'm asking before today, was there any work that you did pertaining to solar uh, and renewable energy? Uh, for Intertrack, no. It was all about the technical. Thank part. you. That's that's all we wanted. Thank okay. you. You may proceed. Then the next question says, um, was the quality compromised because you had quoted 250, but now your second bid you submitted 174. This is the reason why I left the European partners and chose the Chinese because the Chinese were a much bigger company and were willing to give a better price. So on the second submission with Chint, this the first submission was with Greenfuel Solar Europa and then the second submission was with Chint Electric China. So they gave me a better price which is why I put 174 million. I hope that so no quality was compromised. It was still uh, a big company just in fact much better than the Germans. Chairman, follow up. Follow up. Thank you. I think, Honorable Chair, the man is under oath. If we know it takes 50 liters to get to Blawayo, and then a man comes back and says, I will now use 30 liters, quality was compromised. He must just accept it. Point well noted. Chairman, yes, I respond to that? Sorry, no, you don't have to respond to that. I said the point has been noted.
wanted. German. Yes, so on a board. German, I haven't been answered yet. The reason why I'm saying I haven't been answered, I asked him, he kept, in his presentation, he kept saying, uh, he's, he's still uh, responding to certain questions. Some are follow-ups coming through of people who, who ask the questions, so I have to go back to them. Okay. So let's, let, let, let us allow him to, to finish responding. Were you not sure with yourself, why did you change partners? Why did you do the feasibility after the tender? Were you not ch involved in Charles Kua's suicide escapade? Okay. I was very sure of myself, which is why I made a decision to change to the Chinese, because the Chinese were 100 times bigger than the Germans. And after doing my research, I saw that Chint would be to be easier for Zimbabwe to do business with the Chinese company than it is to do with the European community because of the sanctions. So it was a bold decision that I made, and I wasn't doubting myself in any way. That's the reason. And I changed partners because I wanted to go in a lower price. Why did you do the feasibility after the tender? It was a tender document. It said feasibility, engineering, procurement, and construction, and the funding. So I think that's a question... ZPC could answer best because this was a requirement that once you win the tender, you identify the land yourself. Go and look for the land yourself. Then you do a feasibility. This was tender requirement. It was not my decision to say I would do the feasibility after winning. After being awarded, I did the feasibility. That was the tender document requirement. Follow up, Chairman. On a board. The, the follow up is that were you a brief, a chancer? or a briefcase businessman, because you hadn't done this before, but you won the tender. You had never done it before, but you won the tender. I think that question has been asked, he has answered it, and I think some of these questions are for the State Procurement Board, like I've said, to tell us the criteria that they use in giving tenders to people with the uh, uh, business people or not. And just, as, uh, just to answer him as well, when you say briefcase businessman, it's a question of how you want to look at it. I think it I've cost, said that uh, it is for the State Procurement Board to ask the criteria that they use in picking. Yeah. I, I don't think if you're a true businessman, I don't think you want to re really respond to picking. Unless you are a briefcase uh, businessman, you can respond. <laughs> Thank you. Point of qualification. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Right, you mentioned that uh, on the tender document, he was supposed to look for the land for the land himself. So, how much did he pay to Gwanda Town Council or Gwanda Rural Council for the project? No, but tender the site. Oh, should I continue the questions, or should I answer that one first? Continue the questions which were given to you first, and then you can answer that later. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Were you not Charles involved in Charles Kuwaza? I didn't know Mr. Charles Kuwaza personally, and I was never involved in his personal life. I just knew him as the chairman of the State Procurement Board until his dismissal or resignation. May we know when you awarded the tender dates? I wouldn't have the exact dates, but I remember that we signed... We signed the contract on the 20th of October in 2015. And just to respond to your question, uh, the land was not, did not belong to Gwanda. The Minister of Lands is the one who gave us the land. We went to, Ministry of, we went to the Minister of the Province in Mat South, who was Angelina Masuku then, and we told her that there's this project. Then she said, okay, there's land we were given 225 hectares a recommendation letter, which we then took to the Minister of Lands here in Arare, who then said, this is national project and we're interested power generation. And then they gave us an offer letter and said, this land here. So we didn't pay anything other than the, the normal $100 or $50 filing fee and this and this. It didn't cost us anything. Follow up. Yes, follow up. Honorable Chair. When they got the 120 something hectares of a letter, was it 200? 225. 225 hectares of a letter. 
in whose name was that land allocated? Can you respond? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The tender said identify a piece of land. So as part of that requirement, it was interesting we had to say we have found the land and it's here. So the land, the offer letter was in Intertrack Zimbabwe's name, but after signing the contract, we then handed over the land to ZPC in the interest of funding structures where the banks would be more import, interested in having ZPC on the land. So the minister withdrew the land and then handed it over to ZPC. But back then, it was in our name. Uh, Mr. Chivayo, who drew up your tender documents? The tender documents were prepared by Chint Electric. They had a team of 30 engineers, four lawyers, working on the tender documents. The tender documents came from China sealed. The Chinese are very skeptical and they don't trust anybody. So right till the tender day, they come holding their documents and you go and submit together. They won't even tell you the price. You give them a guideline and they submit. So the tender documents came sealed and signed from China. All we, sub all we added was our certificate of incorporation, who are the directors, our tax clearance, just a few documents we added into the funding proposal. Everything else came sealed from China. What did you say to the allegations that Mr. Kajanji is the one who did your tender documents? Those allegations, with all due respect, are baseless and nonsensical. Don't you think uh, this, uh, this is unparliamentary language? Yes. We are in parliament. We are not in Hollywood, neither we're in Dubai. I think you must respect parliament and use the right language. May you withdraw that and replace it with an appropriate word. Thank you. I apologize. I withdraw the statement. Those allegations are untrue. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to put a lot of emphasis, but uh, they are very wrong. Uh, Honorable uh, Mslang. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, I would like um, Mr. Chavayo to clarify if uh, Intratech has any relationship with uh, company called uh, Terminal Engineers, um, and also to take you back a bit to say uh, the offer letter for 225 hectares of land, is it still in uh, Intratech's name or it is now in ZPC's name as we speak? As we speak, the offer letter is now in ZPC's name, and Intratech has had a relationship with the company called Terminal Engineers, which Engineer Kajanje owns, on the Gairezi tender. We participate in another tender with two companies from India, Bharat Heavy Equipment Limited and Angelic International. So because I'm very thorough, when they brought the tender documents, I said to them, can we have Terminal Engineers just to review that the presentation is impeccable. I think I asked you, and you must be honest, that did Mr. Kajanje do your tender documents? You said no. And I think it would have been good for you to say he did for this. Now you're saying it. Oh, Mr. Chairman, no, we, we're talking it. about so we've been talking about the Gwanda Solar specifically. But, but what I'm but trying this to say is Sky Rays no, Hydro. Uh, so if you say what, which tender what, document what, you're referring to Gwanda, but what, so he had nothing to do with Gwanda. But, but if you ask about Guy Rays, I'll tell you what input. input. But what I'm trying to say to you, I think I think what I'm trying to to put across to you is at times don't withhold information. You'd rather just put it forward. I asked you a question. Do you know, Mr. Kajanji, any relationship? In this, he is not there, but in this, I work with him like this. Now it brings the question that you already have a relationship with him in doing this. And then he becomes a ZPC board chairperson. 
do you see the link now? Whether he did not do this, you've, you've had the relationship with him before. And then he becomes the ZPC chairperson. You've had him as a consultant or you've hired his company to work on a certain project for you. So now what we are now looking at is the link between you and him which we can now establish is there and you've admitted. With that link, what would be his role of oversight, even as a ZPC board chairperson, in working with you? Just from a moral point of view. Yeah, obviously, uh, Mr. Chairman, conclu erroneous conclusions can be made, but as a board chairman, he has no influence whatsoever into any adjudication or any awards by State Procurement Board. He is there for issues relating to corporate governance and ZPC, and adjudication is all about the management and adjudication committees that are set and State Procurement Board that uh, reviews the evaluation. The board chairman has no direct influence whatsoever. And it, actually, it was a coincidence that when I had given him this guy, Rezi, to review, I said, I'm not sure about this Indian companies. Charge me just to see how the presentation was. And then the following week, he phoned me and said, I got a letter from the minister saying, I'm now the board chairman. Can I hand you over to someone else to assist you for any future work? And I said, yes. And that was it. And then that's when we cut ties. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Honorable Chair. What I just needed the House maybe to clarify is, is the the nature of the relationship between Encrotech and Terminal Engineers. So that's, that's a very good question. What is the nature of the relationship between Terminal Engineers and Encrotech? Or maybe can you elaborate further? When you say the nature, what, how, what is it exactly? Is it, you know, <laughs> what sort of relationship do you have? As of now. Maybe Honorable Mklanga will probably clarify more to you. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you for coming to my rescue. I just wanted him to unbundle, perhaps to make it, um, you know, more illicit, to make it more, you know, to bring it out, to say this is the kind of relationship that we had. Um, you know, tell us more about your relationship with um, uh, terminal engineers. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I was referred to terminal engineers by another company called No Consult, which was being headed by Mr. Isaac Mpoza. So Mr. Isaac Mpoza said, whenever you want your documents reviewed, we have a very senior engineer, very experienced, who can assist you right through the future. I'm a bit more committed at No Consult, and I can no longer be assisting you. So he then referred me to engineer Kajanji in his individual capacity and we had a meeting and I told him my vision and what I wanted where I wanted the Very company quickly, to head. When, when were you introduced? Was it here or in Dubai? We were introduced in Zimbabwe, it must have been in 2015, end of 2015 or yeah, mid, yeah, 2000 and f beginning of 2015 or end of 2014, I'm not really sure, I can't remember quite. Yeah. It's very important to establish when you were introduced. Yes. You're talking about 2014, this tender was given to you 2015. Yes. So are you saying before this tender was awarded to you, you knew him? No. I, uh, the other tender was not awarded in 2015. It was awarded in 20 and signed in 2016. My in question March. is very clear. Uh, Did you know Mr. Kajanji before you signed this tender? That's where the question is. 2014 would mean yes, you knew him. Yes, if that's I what I'm saying. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, 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 I might be losing a bit. I might be missing it there, but I think I knew him by the time I was awarded the solar tender, yes. So you knew him before you were awarded the tender? Thank you. Follow up. Thank you, Honorable Chair. When 
given that he wrote to the chief secretary and Mr. Kawaza, it's bad to talk about a deceased and a late person in bad essence. Does Mr. Kavayo agree that? Mr. Chivayo, sorry. <laughs> Chivaro. Chivayo. 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 Does Mr. Chivayo agree that the state procurement board, the resignation of Mr. Kwaza was due to fraudulent and maybe corrupt practices as a board member chairperson. Does he, he agree? But he did respond to that. I think that that was asked, uh, honorable member, and it was, it was responded to. He agreed. No, he, he did respond to that. I, I, I disagree. And for the record, the whole delay for the project was because of Mr. Kwaza. If there was anyone that I hated the most who delayed the project the worst, it was Mr. Kwaza. I, I think, uh, I think let's, let, let, let's speak, let's speak good of the, of the ill. We don't have to use, of the dead. We don't have to use the word dead. Uh, I think we now need to go, you need to, to unbundle that relationship with uh, uh, yourself and uh, Mr. Kajanj and, 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 and the company called Terminal. Just for clarity's sake, Chairman. Yes, Honorable. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just for clarity's sake, in the abundance of information which is coming out as a result of a question by Honorable Mklang, if the Honorable, sorry, if uh, Mr. Chifayo can avail to this house, are there chances that probably this contract which was coming in you were advised somehow through Mr. Chijanj that please form this company so that we'll give you so that we'll give you this tender so that you make you, we make we make money somewhere when you met and uh, if you can avail under oath as to whether you have a, a, had a, that chance somewhere that you'll be given advice somewhere somehow so that you form this company. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Not at all. I formed this company with my partner, my own accord, and we had our own vision. There was no influence whatsoever from Engineer Kajanja. And ideally, you could not then say you'll award because it doesn't, it's not him who awards. But all, with all the presentations that you have, you have done so far, Mr. Chivayo, and all the, the loopholes that you see and with the influence that you had access to the chief secretary and the easy part of getting a response when people take two, three years to get a response. Don't you think you had much more influence and experience to deal with this in terms of working on the shelf company? And, 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 and you said that uh, Mr. Kwaza was delaying the project. Well, why do you say so? If gov we know government is very slow. And if it was part of doing his job, why would you rush to say he was slowing down the, the whole process? I mean, and secondly, Mr. Chairman, yes. that he hated him. A deceased, you will never say he, you hate somebody who was late. He, he has got families and they are listening to that, that he hated the, it's uncultural, according to Zimbabwe's laws. I think he, told, he I think he withdrew that. Did you not withdraw the word hate? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's total uncultural, I think, yes. honorable. Is, my, my, I think, can you continue to unbundle? Okay, my apologies, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for us, as business people, when you wait one year or you wait for two years, and then you look at the, the power shortages, Actually, you, you have every reason to feel that there is delay in whatever processes that are going through. So in our view, there were a lot of delays because normally they would award tenders in a shorter space of time, in four months and six months, but this kept on dragging on and on and on for years. So this is actually what we thought. 
But no, Mr. Kwasi is not here, so we'll not really ask him. What about if he was trying to avoid the undue processes, the influence of the people that you've spoken to and wanted it to be fair? We'll never know, but I think let's also appreciate that we don't want to talk about him. He cannot come here and answer to some of these issues. So I think it's best we probably avoid mentioning him uh, in terms of <coughs> where a response is needed from him. Yeah. I think that would be the, the, the fairest way of handling that. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, I got introduced to Engineer Kajanji by uh, Mr. Isaac Mpots. And he said, should you have any projects that you want reviewed or any engineering support, I have an engineer that has a lot of experience that can assist you as and when you need him. Because I won't be able to assist you in the future because I'm now more committed and no consult and I won't be able So that's how I was introduced to him. And when I was introduced to him, I told him I was participating in the guy raising tender with Barat Heavy Equipment Limited and uh, Angelic International. And once the tender documents come before we submit, I would need him just to review and see that the technical specifications are correct and give me an opinion before we submit. And ideally, when the documents came from India, I asked him to say how much will you charge me for reviewing the documents before I submit and he gave me his company's price to review the documents and I he reviewed them gave me his comments and we paid him and that was it that is basically the only transaction we ever had with them I think what was important was to just understand the relationship that you had and it is uh, uh, to your to your response that you did have the relationship. So I think that's what we wanted to establish. I think members, if we can move to the part of the payments now, I think we've exhausted this enough. We want to go about the payments. The other issue is if you could equally um, uh, talk to us about the payment processes and uh, the amount of money paid to you for this project. And I think that would then lead to the work that has been done with uh, the money that has been paid to you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> just to it will explain as I continue from the award and during the feasibility. As part of the pre-commencement works, we agreed that it would be one million over Point four order. months. And then feasibility. Is, my point of order, Honorable Chair, is uh, Mr. Chivayo has got partners representing the other stakeholders or his partners. What do they, don't they have anything to say in accordance so far on what we have just heard from him? On the contrary, on, on what I thought I would do is to also get the lawyers to also speak after they have spoken if there are issues which they need to really bring up. So, uh, as part of the agreements in the contract, we said we would do pre-commencement works at $1 million uh, a month over four months. So this figure was kept at $4 million, and then that was excluding VAT, and then feasibility was $2.1 million. That was the cost. So we, <coughs> we then embarked on the pre-commencement works. First of all, the commitment in terms of the contract was to pay me $2.1 million for the feasibility study. I went to the managing director. Uh, just interruption. There's a car, ADI-9498. ADI-9498. Whoever is the owner, can you please move your vehicle? ADI-9498. 
Thank you. Proceed. So, the initial uh, payment was supposed to be for feasibility studies, which was 2.1 million. So after raising an invoice, I went to the managing director of ZPC, uh, who was Mr. Noah Guariro, and I presented the invoice for the feasibility. Then Mr. Guariro said, uh, for the pre-commencement works, they required an advance payment guarantee. So, well, the whole amount, which would, be, which would have been close to maybe seven million. So, as they required an advance payment. Honorable yes. Please, can we have the exact figures? Can we have the exact figures? Uh, an advance payment guarantee can be for the sm a small amount that you are just getting paid. But I'm saying Much for the total of the pre-commencement rate, it would have been eight million. I beg your pardon? In this case, how much were we talking about? We're talking about, about 2.1 million. So, um, Engineer Guadalupe then said, ah, the problem was for anything, the pre-commencement works, they required an advance payment guarantee in terms of the contract. But I then... Um, refer to another provision in the contract which allows the employer to waiver any conditions in the contract. So I say to him, all the local banks that were willing to give an advance payment guarantee were charging 5%. So 5% of roughly 7 million for the pre-commencement works would be about 350,000. So I say to him, for, for a local company, for us to spend... Point of order, Honorable Chair. Yes, what's the point of order? Um, the, these works were undertaken, these payments were made, but he continues to refer to roughly around 7 million. And, and here we would like to know if this amount was 5 million or if it was 7 million or if it was 6 point something. We just want to have that clarity. What are we talking about here? I think it's, it's in order that you yeah. give us a, a real figure, exact figure, the exact figure. Thanks. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think if the honorable members just mm -hmm. allow me to explain, they'll get all their questions answered as I explain. Because I was giving the round figure for the whole pre-commencement works estimated, and then it, I'll obviously get to the point of how much I was paid, when and how, and over how many times. So I was just trying to get to the point, but you, after I finish explaining, I'm sure it'll be quite clear. Oh, you, you know, if, if, when you when you are dealing with things, figures you don't explain much. Figures explain themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think if you tell tell us the total figure, and then questions will arise from the in terms of from this total figure, what then did you do with it? And this is where you can then give a breakdown of saying this money went here, this money went here, and so forth. Yes, uh, um, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm I'm under oath, and I'm not going to say it's exactly seven million. Then tomorrow I'm, I'm charged to went to a 7.3 million. Say so you lied, that was 7 million when it's 7.6. This is why I'm saying roughly, but if you want the exact figures I have, I can get them. But for Mr. now, Mr. you, you knew you were coming and before I, I this commit. I don't think you want to come back again. And the letter was very clear, payment processes. And I think this is the problem. When you're on your own, in most organizations, the financial director would be giving these figures. But now you have so much, and the letter was very clear in telling you why we'd invited you here, the payment processes. So it was important for you to have that with you so that you respond accurately to them, because this is the real issue, as you know. Other issues are not as important as this issue that we're talking about, how much you got, where the money went to. And you cannot say roughly, I don't know. We had ZPC here. They told us clearly that they paid you seven million. Seven point. Seven point. Yes, Plus. yes. We had. Uh, uh, you know, if it, if it, if, it, if, you are, if you are not able to tell us the total amount of money that you've been paid here, it says a lot about.
the way you run your companies from a governance point of view. We then end up going into many issues that who does your finance, who does this and that. So I think just tell us how much you got and then it is broken down. Yes, Mr. Shimo, we, we hadn't gotten to that question. Uh, I wasn't answering yet how much I got. But uh, if ZPC said they gave me 7 million, that's incorrect. Because the payments are clear, it's there, that is 5 billion. They went into bank, one bank account. And this is very clear it was 5 million. I was actually shocked when Engineer Kashin said it was actually 7 million. The whole pre commencement works are 7 million. There's a balance of about 1.3, 1.4 million, excluding VAT, that to complete the works. But what they paid ideally was 5. Five million exactly. Can you then give us a breakdown of the okay. of the five million yes, which was paid to yeah, the I'll, I'll, of time. We want a breakdown of that amount of money. Okay, I'll, 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 I was still Mr. explaining. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Since I'm sure it's important to have records and to put records officially, can you put it through to this committee? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chair, can you put it through that the presentation that we had from the the, the Zisa Holdings team, which came with the Honourable Minister, when they did a presentation that they gave you money to the tune of plus seven million, and they were under oath, they were presenting to this Parliament falsehoods. Can you put it to the record? I think it's important you you think you think clarify that that's our role of oversight. Uh, ZPC say they gave you over seven million, and you're saying you did not receive that. Can you can you please attest to that? Yes, Honourable Chairman, ZPC did not pay me seven million, but they paid five million. That's that's the amount. That's the correct amount that I was paid. So can you? The, the issue of the five million displaced first of all was not was they did not was they not supposed to be a bank guarantee? I think as I was explaining I was going to get to that step by step. Remember I was I was just about to get to that point. Anyway, I, I, I then went to the managing director and said in provisions of the contract we uh, the employer can waiver some of the conditions in the contract in the interest of progress of the project. Then uh, engineer Guariro then refused to pay for the feasibility, although he said his engineers were looking at it and reviewing it. Again, I went to the erstwhile Minister of Energy, Mr. Undenge, and I presented my case to him that I had completed a feasibility, which was to the tune of 2.1 million, uh, and the project was on a standstill because as a local company I, was, I had no capability of getting a guarantee with the fees that are being charged by local companies and the feasibility, I would already submitted the feasibility to ZPC. So, Chairman, Chairman, Chairman. Yes, Honourable Tim. The idea having gone through the, the management at, uh, at ZPC, he had to, to usurp that process. He went to the Honorable Minister to seek influence. Was it purely so that he, he will go against social corporate responsibility, laid, laid down rules? Is it, is it in perpetuity, is it pro, in propensity to the presentation that he did earlier on when he failed to get the tender, he had to go to the Honorable Minister now he fails to get this two point something million because condition has not been met. He has to go through to the minister. Is it a character that whenever things fall apart with regard to rules, you subvert them using senior influence? I, I think we will, we will get to that. I think that's a, that's a pertinent question as we as we as we go on. I think the issue is. You, you, you tend to go to to the higher offices. The, the managing director said no, but the managing director reports to a board. The board has got a group CEO. The group CEO has got a chairman. There's a PEMSEC and so forth. But of course, no one questions who you must go and see. But this is just what members of parliament tend to be kind of picking up. I'm sure they'll, they'll ask questions why they brought this up, but it is noted. May you proceed? Okay, so I then presented that to the Minister Ondinge to say 
I've already submitted a feasibility to the tune of 2.1 million, which they are already reviewing, but they are insisting on an advance payment guarantee. And I had proposed to them that they do payments in milestones, basing on what work I had delivered. And that was a provision in the contract that they could use milestones of what work I've done, and then they pay against that. The, the, the minister said uh, he would look into it and also consult his principles in the interest of project, uh, of the progress of the project. Uh, I was then called by engineer Guariri a week later, and he said to me that he, he got uh, specific instructions from the minister that the project must proceed and there must be no delays as the project was very important to the nation. So he was paying the feasibility study of, uh, to the tune of 2.1 million. That's when I received the payment of 2.1 million for the feasibility. Members, you don't have to, to really shout. I think uh, you're honorable members. So I was paid 2.1 million for the feasibility and I delivered the feasibility. Sorry, you were paid that without a bank guarantee because you did not get a bank guarantee. Yes, I didn't get a bank guarantee, but remember I delivered the feasibility. So a bank guarantee is to guarantee the money you are being paid for something you have not done. So in this instance, I had done the feasibility. So a payment was just due to me because they had it. So a guarantee is called an advance payment guarantee that we are advancing you. Give us security that in case you don't deliver this, we are safe, we are secured. So I had given them the feasibility. But obviously they kept insisting but that... A bank guarantee and feasibility are two different things. You cannot say a feasibility study is a bank guarantee. What is the purpose of a bank guarantee? If you fail, to, then the bank guarantee kicks in if we all understand business at yes. the end of it. So how do you then compare a visibility study to being guaranteed? I'm not comparing the two. You're not understanding me, Mr. Chairman. No, the question before you is, did you got... My questions are very simple. You yes. got 2.1, 2.2 million yes. without a big guarantee, yes or no? There was no need for a guarantee I had delivered. The guarantee was to secure in the event that I don't deliver the feasibility. But in this instance, I had delivered the feasibility. So I was being paid for work oh, okay, done. Okay. For us, that you did not get a guarantee. Yes, I was going to come to that. No, no, I, I, want, I want to take you back. I want to take you back. You did mention to us yes. that you did not get a guarantee. Did you not? Yes, I did. So, so when you were looking, when you were trying to get a guarantee, it was for what? It was for the whole amount because they were all classified as pre-commencement works. You were still given money for for two point two point for the feasibility, but without a bank guarantee. Yes, because they had been separated from the pre-commencement works. But the question before you is simple: a bank guarantee was needed for the whole amount. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. And it's for for you to to understand that you got no bank guarantee for the two point uh, two point one million. 2.1 million. This is the question that is before you, because you did go and get a bank, try and get a bank guarantee, you didn't get it. The next question is that, why did you not get the bank guarantee? Is it because of your previous convictions? Because this is where they come in now. Because we would want to ask, because here is a big project which is being done, and the banks here don't want to give you money. And according to this document, which I have, which you wrote to us, it clearly talks about you uh, mobilizing funds from the local banks and the international banks. Am I right or wrong? So, to me, the, the, the local banks you went to and they gave you no bank guarantee. So how then were you going to continue when this letter that you wrote to us, an agreement, clearly stipulates the conditions that the mobilization of resources will be done locally and internationally, but then you fail to attract money locally by not producing a big guarantee and then you then get the money. This is where the real question is, Mr. Chivayo. You had no bank guarantee. After going for one, you did not get it. You got the money 
And you also mentioned that in getting the money, when the managing director said no, who was following the corporate governance issues of the bank guarantee, you then went to the minister. And then you are clearly saying that in going to the minister, Mr. Aguero then called you to clearly say that I have instructions, honorable members. Am I wrong? Because this is what you're saying to us. You are saying I have instructions from the minister to now give the money and depart from corporate governance and use the powers of the minister to then allow you to get the money. Are we right or wrong so that we make progress? No, well, that observation could, could be correct. No, you say that. Yeah, that observation I think, be correct. I think, I think honorable, uh, Mr. Chivayo. I'm not honorable, Mr. Chairman. Just, just uh, Mr. 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 Chivayo. <laughs> I think, I think it, is, it, is, it is important for you to take this seriously. No, indeed. This is not a, a, a talk show. Yes. We are trying to ascertain, to understand public funds, how they're being spent. And that's why we're trying to do this. And whether the due process has been followed. This leads to many questions which will come through. We're going step by step to understand you were paid. We then have asked you, what is the progress to date? We'll be coming to that after the payments have been made. But you had said you then got a call from the managing director to say there are instructions from the minister. Can you proceed from there? Okay. So he then said that uh, uh, I've received instructions from the minister that we must uh, proceed with the project at all costs. And considering that we have reviewed your feasibility and we're happy with it, we are going to pay you the 2.1 million for the feasibility. Then we agree on the payment of the milestones of the $4 million per month. So I submitted an invoice for the 2.1 million for the feasibility, which was subsequently paid in two or three tranches. So when they paid for the feasibility, I can't remember the month, but it must have been December and January. Then we embarked on the pre-commencement works. So for the pre-commencement works, there was fencing, there was geotechnical survey, there was site establishment, there were web designs, access roads, and clearing the land, just in brief. Then, uh, Sorry, on that, when did you get the money and when did you put up the fence? And are you done with the fence? When did you get the money and when did you put up the fence? Um, the fence is being put up like half, almost half now. Because. Uh, Sorry, honorables, you can come in. I just want to understand when you got the money and when the fence has been. Because okay. been, uh, the money has been given to you and the money given to you covers how much distance of the fence. Yeah. Uh, I would like you to also go into that. Yeah, and Mr. when Mr. did you Chairman, erect the fence? My, my, my apologies. Can I just finish no, the explanation no, 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 on no, no, until no, the no, end? No, then no, questions can come in from what I've explained. No, because no, I, think, no. I think sitting here means I am the chair. Yes. And I think I guide the meeting. There are certain issues which are not important. We want to go on about money issues. It's now quarter past one. And I think we want to tackle the most pertinent issues. And like we are talking about figures here. And I think it is the figures that we want. And these questions that we are asking you are in line with what we are trying to establish in how the money was then spent when you received the money. I think that's, the, the, that's what we are, we are more or less trying to achieve. So when you got the money, when did you get the money? And when was the fence done? And was the money for enough to fence the whole area or to fence half of what you've done now? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Like I was saying, my explanation is almost over. It's just brief. It'll explain everything. Then it makes your, your questions answer themselves. Once I just finish. Why, so don't, you, being... why don't you answer the question I've put before you? Okay, because we were talking about the... We were talking about the... We were talking about... We were talking about the feasibility, which was the first step. Before we spoke about web designs, road access, clearing the land. All that we've then heard. the fence came Mr. after. Mr. So now you've asked Mr. about Mr. the Mr. fence, Mr. which means Mr. you've Mr. jumped Mr. all the other. Mr. Mr. Yes. Let's, let's be together. Yes. 
we totally have understood all that. Yeah. We are saying you were paid the money. Yes. So when, when, when were you paid? And when did the work start? And where are we in terms of the work? Did the work that you've started, did the money cover all the work? Or there's still money outstanding? Because we said we're here to also help you to ensure that this project moves forward. It's not only one-sided. We represent everyone in talking to you. So don't see us as your enemies. We also want to ensure if they're not paying you on time, we push them to pay you on time as a recommendation. But if they've paid you on time, we also want to understand the progress of work that has been done when they've paid you. Just, just a point of clarity yes. also. If he, if he can also explain how that man was paid in terms of displacement. How was it dispersed? Yeah. Five million. Okay. All right. So, after receiving the money for the feasibility, they then started paying for the. That's what I said in January, uh, uh, January 20, 2016. Yes, January. The, the, yes, for the feasibility. After they paid for the feasibility, then we embarked on the pre-commencement works. We agreed that these various things must be done at the site uh, in comparison to this amount of money that to be paid. So from the 4 million, we agreed that including that, it would then be almost 5 point something. They would pay every month and 1 million plus that. It would come out to 1 million 150 something, 1 million 159,000 each month. So they paid, after paying the feasibility, they paid uh, the payment release certificate one, we went to the site and we embarked on the works, which was the web designs, uh, getting the road to to the transmission line and the road to the to the substation, which is almost 17 kilometers. And we were also assisting with the environmental impact assessment uh, that was required as well with by the banks. And as we proceeded with the pre-commencement works, we then reached a hurdle that after being paid about another three million on top of the two million, some of the work could not be quantified because it was probably 70% complete, some of it was 60% complete, but they were only willing to, they were only willing to certify the work as done when it's on 100%, when it's 100% complete. So as we were doing some of the work, then came the controversy of the payment without the, gun, the guarantee and it leaked into the newspapers that I was paid without a guarantee and then they stopped paying. So when they stopped paying, because of the resources I had laid out at the site, I had to then demobilize because I had no option because they, were, they now wanted a guarantee and they would say uh, it was uh, <clears throat> all over the papers that I was paid without a guarantee. One of my partners, we renegotiated. One of my subcontractors offered a guarantee from South African International Guarantee, and then they said, no, we cannot take a South African. Sorry, we want to be consistent. The first time the guarantee, the first time you did not get money, you went to the minister. Yes. So why did you not go back to the minister again this time? Was there was no basis to, to go back to the minister because they were saying Mr. That Mr. Mr. Yeah. Let's, let's move together. Yeah. The first time you did not get money, you went and appealed to the minister. Yes. The minister issued an instruction for you to get the money without the guarantee. That is the reason why I've been talking about the big guarantee consistently. So why did you not go back to the minister again for, you, for the minister to instruct you to get the money again? Because that is the channel that you were using. So why did, that's why I'm asking, we want work to happen, why did you not go to the minister again so that he gives you money? Uh, but, but, <laughs> Honorable Chair, uh, you cannot say why didn't I go back to the minister. Yeah. I made a decision that it was better to try and get the guarantee. Why? No. But f f the first time round, you, you were supposed to get money through a guarantee, you did not. The managing director said, say that you can't get the money. You then went to the minister. The managing director then called you to say that, come, there's an instruction for you to get the money. This time around, there was no money. So my question with your consistency of getting money, why did you not go back to the minister to instruct again the managing director to give you money? I mean, obviously, when a project spills into bad publicity, 
and newspapers, ideally, you know, everybody <laughs> tends to run away and nobody is willing to... It's good, it's good, continue, yes. yes. So when a project spills in the paper... The newspaper, yeah, so I had to go back to ZPC and I tried to go back to the... I, I, the minister was saying at least get a guarantee. You were saying now it's all spilled in the newspapers and it now looks as though there was corruption when there wasn't any corruption. Uh. Get members to... There are allegations that the minister was paid money. Okay. What would be your response to that? That you paid money into their accounts? I never paid the minister any money. Would you be able to finish this committee with, with a bank statement which the money got in and where the money went to? Because it's also important for us to follow up whether this money went to the intended purpose of, the, of this whole project. Uh, I mean, as a company, we would not uh, uh, furnish our bank statements. But if wow. we are given an order, you surely can access bank statements for all our our company this, directly. We have oversight and we are asking, we are, we are actually telling you, in fact, uh, that we need your bank statement for us to see where the two million you paid went to. Did it go to the intended purposes or not? So it is part, because these are public funds which must be accounted for. As such, we protect the thing public in terms of money being misappropriated. So it's good for you, it's good for ZPC, it's good for all of us here to see a statement and to see whether this money went to the intended purpose of this whole project. So if you can, on Friday again, when you're bringing those documents, bring us your bank statement yep. uh, pertaining to this money that you're given by ZPC. Yes, but uh, it's not, our account did not only have money from ZPC. We had so many more millions from different places that were in the account. So in the interest of our privacy, I'll have to consult my, su my superiors. But I mean, if we're given an order to give to give uh, this house our I think we've asked you for those documents. It is, it is on record that we've asked all we're interested in is seeing where the two million that you were given by ZPC went to. We are not worried about the millions and billions which are there. We are only worried about the two million which is public funds, whether it went to the intended purpose. So we expect those documents. Yes, Honorable Mnenga. Sorry, it's not two million, because he was paid five million. In fact, that was the very question which I asked Ruti. How was that five million dispersed? So I think you have actually said so. The question which I wanted was, it would be better for him to finish us with that information. Then, secondly, my honorable chair, Vajifai, to doubt me as of Funza, I would say, Makaitana minister, Kuenda Kunokumbira, Kutimupu Emai. Imi misa businessmen kana wote semu garu muno mu muni kama Zimbabwe. Mabasa akangari pamu soro pesa kana kairi kana kuti paka tuita e chukumu. Mabasa munga ti imi mikuenda kuna kumbira kama kaita minister. Ibasa kana wote unu unora tiza unere. Pa 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 msoro hicho men. Kwa kwa ndi la pala shanda katad. In the businessmen, in the last few years, I'm not in Norway. I'm not in the Norway. I'm not in the I am persistent. I mean, I guess that's the reason why I'm not in the Norway. 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 I'm Panga pasina chogo mwenye chaidiwa project ndaka ya watu wana state procurement board after an open tent saka na baada kuzopa darwa muno ende kuona minister asisi nzaga wa matete. Just on a point of order, stick stick to the question asked in that in all this were there no underhand dealings? Because do you know why, uh, Mr. Chifayo? You said before of that the first disbursement, the managing director refused. Yes. 
Then you went to the minister. Yes. The minister gave an instruction. When you needed more money, management said no. But you did not go to the minister. And you said because it leaked. So whether it leaks or not, if you're doing a proper thing, why doesn't it continue? So to me, you say to yourself, it leaked in the media. And the minister stopped. So which says there was something bad happening because the minister was supposed to continue doing his job despite the leak. Because it's a national project which no, is critical for the country. I know uh, that background is critical for you to understand that all these questions are coming from what you are saying. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ah. You be given your time to respond. Uh, Honorable Nengami's point is critical. You said, Mulora. Honorable Chitakwa, can you come in? <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just want, I just want Mr. Chivayo to know that did, was he aware? Uh, when he was called by the, the, the engineer or the managing director to say, come and collect your money now, we have been instructed that by the minister. Was you aware that it was illegal because he was getting that money without a bank guarantee? You, you really know that. First of all, you failed to get that money because you could not produce a bank guarantee. But now you are getting it because the minister has used his influence. Were you aware that it was illegal? What, what the minister was doing and what he was doing in the minister. Were you aware that you were getting that money and it, you were using illegal ways because you didn't have proper documents for you to receive that money? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. There was nothing illegal about the payment. There was nothing unusual. I have a contract with ZPC. There are provisions in the contract. It's not like ZPC went and paid somebody on the street. They were paying somebody who did work for a contract that they signed. So there was nothing illegal that I did or that the minister did. I think, Mr. Chivayo, yes. you've got to understand the aspect of the bank guarantee. You seem to be missing that. The question that has been asked is that, were you aware that whatever was happening was outside the due process of what is expected, that a bank guarantee should be there? Yes, to show that it was illegal, the first time the money was released by the minister. The second time it was leaked, the money was not released. And you said before us, the same managing director told you we cannot give you money until you give us a bank guarantee. Is that not what you say to us? That's exactly, that's exactly what I said. So, uh, so, so to me, if so it was legal, so to me, his point, if it was legal, why then were you then requested of a bank guarantee second time around when the first time you got money without the bank guarantee? Why did that process not continue because it was good before the leak? So if it was not for the leak, it was going to continue. We were going to complete, but as the newspaper started writing and accusing everybody of corruption, nobody wanted to stand that sort of pressure. Everybody became a... It's not about them accusing anyone of corruption, even if things are written every day. But if you know you're doing the right thing, you don't stop. This is a national project. Yes. They can only stop because it is true what they are saying. No, it wasn't true. So to me, the question is that, so if it was not illegal, like he's saying, why did the minister not give you money, and why did the managing director still insist on a black guarantee, despite him giving you the money at first without a black guarantee? Thank you, Mr. Uh, there was no, my response is more or less the same. There was nothing illegal. There were provisions. There, there are provisions in the contract that allow the employer, represented by the managing director, to waive certain conditions in the interest of progress of the project. So everything he did was in the interest of progress of the project. It was not illegal because it's there in the contract. The provisions are there. I, I hope. You also have picked up on Nengami's point that we not only which hunting we need a bank statement with all the money, public funds given to you on this project before us. We will then be able to scrutinize and be able to then ask questions where this money went to and who 
the people who got the money, how involved they are in this project. I hope you've taken note of that. I had spoken about the two point something million, but now we are going to the full amount of this pro of this whole pro project, a bank statement. And if possible, to be able to finish us is a documentation telling us this amount of space of this one is the former or activities which clearly indicates where the money went to. That would make our job easier to solve. I'm sure as an organization, before you make up the problems, there is the former, but that is submitted from and then you have your pre-commencement um, works. Um, you say you were paid three million, is that right? Yeah, it was three, yeah, about three point something. Yeah. I have a problem with the somethings on a project because we need to have... Um, you well, know, the, the, the amounts included VAT, so three million, three. 3 million, then the last PRSC there was a, a balance of about 1.4 which they didn't We don't pay. want the balance. We want to talk about the money that you were paid as feasibility payment, yes. which is um, straightforward, it's 2.1 million you say. Yes. Like I said, I, I won't commit to the exact figures since I'm under oath, but on the documents that I'll submit, I'll do a write-up to, to give a breakdown of how much I was paid, when I was paid, what the total was and what the balance was. Okay, fine. Some figures include VAT, some figures don't, so it's very confusing. So my payment now is what was paid to government as VAT. Oh. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I paid about 750000 as VAT. To government? To Zimra. Yeah, that's, that's government. Yeah. Um, and was that sufficient? Do you owe anything in terms of that project? Uh, on the last... Uh, payment release certificate that they haven't paid, there is a balance of 159,000 for Zimra. But all the other, on the feasibility and all the other three payments, I immediately remitted what was due to Zimra. Why is this uh, 159,000 outstanding? It's outstanding because I haven't been paid that amount. It's still with the employer. But honestly, if, if it's outstanding because you haven't been paid, then it's not owing. I'm talking about the amounts that you received in person. Yeah, out of all the amounts I received, I paid everything. You do that not was... owe anything to Zimra. Well, Zimra don't work. Zimra, once you have an invoice, they want their money. Please, when they... you answer my question, oh. it's a simple... For the amounts that you received from Zesa, oh. you do not owe anything in terms of VAT. This is what I'm explaining, that Zimra requires, I once you put an, an invoice... I just want a simple I think it's answer. a very simple question. Yes. From the amount of money you received, yes. have you paid your dues to Zimra? Yes or no? That's yes. What... yes. Timelessly for that fact. Then Honorable and this school is such a many between five million and seven million. Because why is it PC we can talk about the seven million? Who is talking of five million? So I don't I, I don't understand which exactly figure we have. Happen, we will then write to ZPC to give us a breakdown of the seven million that they think mentioned to us, uh, and then I think that will help us uh, get, uh, you know get to the real issue. Honourable Matamanad. Matamas Chairman. Chairman Dan Chingotera and Wichau. I see Dan Chimbira on the Punze. Eh, what if I would? Yes, since the Murindim mastermind Magafunga planning Kaipa government. Co. A bank guarantee, Mammy Nair, good bank. I know a Drugus or a Murman, I fight it out the idea of business. And as bank guarantee, Mammy Nair, and he Maria, you Yanga yaka wanda shakati. Andika, yotila kuona kuti chakaita kutimutu, kutimutu strife. Kutimu fighter, sok fighter. Yes, you are a fighter. Because maga wina chunu jaifa na wendi swane mchemo. As government yaka ita, yaka tora nguwa ya kukupai wefa. Maka puwa wefa ya kupuwa, pasi na garanti. Andika, mchemo wedi wa indigenous asian. Iri puere wefa, iyo kuma small, kuma young indigenous asian like you. Kuti mune wefa, yari kutimutu with such kind of project without being guaranteed. Kana iri po, it's good. 
to say it so that we can help you to uh, open. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To do tender up on Matau Ramrugit, Wongu, a Kuti guarantee and Ragutang and Dissinga Kwani Siguruan. A Sirida Maria Kawand, Rider three hundred and fifty thousand. Indigachina means that. It is in Muloko, the visa 350. Pamarenda Poe, 2.1 million. Jafana Badaro and Waita feasibility. Imagutin in the Badare guarantee 350,000. Snozo no, no, Saro Nichi, Canada Zo Badara and Way feasibility. Minister Gajito Wong says what feasibility to Akawapa. Cherry conditions, whatever chat feasibility at you. Yaga it was a Kanaka area. Indoji Zendo Gunea Kuruang, Dishno Funzoti. Tom Badara, Nima Mira, Zakaita, is Zakat Zakat, Nima Mira, Lujisoya, Dona Dingaku Batsere say. Chairman, Clarity Young Kunavach, and they would say, What if I look out when you mean me, Ripap? I'm a Zimbabwean, and this could have been as an individual. Look out, look out as in the trick. In terms of the sorry chairman, Papa and Mamboti, you. Uh, state procurement board. But as a local businessman, Isusu Kutanangura Kotash and Beta, we are Kuti, Kambanenu, Yakango, we assist. Imibi Zumamoto or Makatan, Ma 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 Bizi, Amanas, Michael Kabucha and Amam Tora, Ma 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 Tenda documents, Akabaka Prepua, Nikamba Nebu China, Munakum Mafura, I am Gurua Street, I change up state procurement. Saka imimi uloka we kamba niye uche uche we pack. We are local because we are registered in Zimbabwe, and the kanani chiti bid there are technical submission yaga baguchint it is sealed. Pa funding proposal lo pata gani ndo Afri exam tika tipe utamba tine projecti. Waga to kumbro gona profile yenyu to gona kuti imi morgu senda nani tika disusa tina mbovu rataka ita basai. As true Shandani Ava, where China, Africa's Mugat Iowa Tamba to no pie, no two and a moose in the now to no azure, what watch but Tamba. To the end of Benge BC, to get his susu to the local, as true Shandani company in China, to pay us support later, we got to no pie fifteen per cent of the total project cost, we got your old Tamba. Saga Basaredu, Rangare Batsira, Pakchangamari, his susu to Chifamba Nesitari, our way to China. We could China one way on the Matamba, Osaga, Takajis over a funding proposal to Patajis eight drafter. Chitikuno say in the trick. Africa is a match Patamba, a goody, and a four hundred million to look on Occupy, Patsapa project Yagadai, and Amchishanda, Newano, our Benge BC, Yatpo, Samba Yati, to look on Occupy twenty million, which is more than fifteen per cent of the project. Tika Viper put Kenda. South Africa could name financial institution. Yaka by a new support later. Could you sustain on a good bad sira? To go on a good bad sira, Kuchaga, fifteen per cent. In ages of Diwa Kana China, Yasa, eighty five per cent. Saga is sustained to immobilize or till Kuno, Tito's Kuchaga Mari, my local banks, Sandish Pindrom, Vunzoa, Honorable Chairman, Ongo Chiti, Pamoka Shaya Mari, can guarantee any previous conviction. Apana can apply to our conviction. Peso. No doubt, Kunaman just catch go go go. Apana and Dagambo convict one. That's the introduction. A Kunaman and Taras, you know, for both a businessman. I think, I think um, uh, some of these comments will invite more questions, which which will be here until I think the, the, the issue of you not, not getting a bank guarantee is critical. And the uh, the point was, is it because of a credibility issue or not? Because you're talking about big financial houses here, and we're saying, why could they not support you? So it's no point you naming these big institutions when, when, they need, when you need a guarantee, they don't give you. So it's, it's, uh, it's for them to tell us why, but for us is to know whether you're the guarantee or not according to the disbursement of money, and the guarantee was not there. What I was asking you, a question you did not answer that, to date, in terms of the work done, you said that you've done half of the fence. I asked you, when did you get the money? When did you start the work? And the money you got, does it cover the work that you're doing in terms of fencing, or it does not? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commencement works, when you're doing them, 
you have to complete all of them. There's no criteria that defines to say, do the fence first, or clear the land first, or, but you, as the contractor, choose how, what do I start with? I start with uh, the designs. Let me look at the road to the transmission to the substation. Let me start by this. So it's not like when uh, you have a criteria of saying, I should put the fence first, or I should do this first. As long as you can complete all of them, as they are pre-commencement works before the contract. So at this stage, yes, we're doing the fence, but we're also going to start on clearing the land. When Z, just to turn off, when we at ZPC here, they said that they'd taken over the project. They'd taken over the project. So is it the same, the same project that they're talking about? Because ZPC are saying we're on the ground now. And we are doing it. But you're also saying you're on the ground. You're doing it. So as ZBC, did they lie before us that they had taken over? When they, say they take, when they say they have taken over, after these challenges that we faced with the paying made of the balance, we... The new dispensation is three months old. We're talking about Hold things on. that happened a oh, year no, no, ago. No, 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 Let's allow him to respond to the question. In taking over, because you're talking about two issues. Yes. The same project you're talking about, ZPC said we've taken over because you failed. Okay? They've, they've taken over because you failed. What would you say to that? Uh, well, that's incorrect. Uh, uh, so who's on the ground? It's our subcontractors and ZPC. <laughs> so, but where ZPC is supposed to be on the ground? Yes, because it's their project. They are supposed to be there. In terms of their project, so what is their role in the, in, in the project? In this, what, what thing role are they playing right now in this whole pro 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 the, the ZPC is the employer, so they are supposed to be present on site to supervise the works and see they have somebody employed on the site. No. No. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about supervising. Yes. They did not say they were supervising. Yes. They said they have taken over the project because of you not delivering. No. What, what would, what, what, so are you telling me all they're doing, they've just got a supervisor who's watching what you're doing. So they have nothing that they're doing. What we agreed was that I brought my subcontractors. They reviewed the subcontractors that I had. And then I brought in a suggestion, uh, which I said, if you pay the subcontractors directly, because I will certainly not be able to get a guarantee. So rather so, you thank you pay... very much. So you have admitted now that you have failed to run the project and you dropped in ZPC are doing it. Like you said, so ZPC now have come in. They've they are, always been in, they're the owner of the project. No, let's go step by step. Yes. In what you are admitting now yes. is that you have agreed with ZPC to do certain works because you don't have the money. Is that not what you're saying? No. I'm saying we agreed with ZPC that the balance of the pre-commencement works, they pay the subcontractors directly and this engage them so that but who was supposed, supposed to pay them from the initial agreement? ZPC is supposed who? to pay me, and then I pay the subcontractors. But we signed an agenda. But now we're going in the right direction. ZPC diverted from paying you and paying somebody else. Because I said I can't uh, uh, give them the guarantee that they require. But they gave you money to do some work. Yes, but it was combined works for all the pre-commencement works. So the balance that they're supposed to pay then gets to completion of the work. So I made a presentation to them and said, look, this balance, if I spread it around and pay this company, this company, and this company, all these works that are due will, will be completed. So they said, okay, let's sign an addendum to that effect. Then we pay directly the subcontractors. Then we To do the work, to, to raise money to finish off the work. Now an addendum is coming in. Because an addendum is after. Yes. So the original agreement does not talk about ZPC coming in. An addendum is after you have failed and it's added because it's simple addendum add. It means it's now being added because you have failed. Otherwise, it was not supposed to be there. Yes. So you have failed. Thank you for, for, for responding to that. Y yes, uh, 
Honorable Mayor Dueko, then I'll go to Honorable Sayami and then Honorable Klang. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Order. Order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hey. Ask that question, Honorable. Honorable Madureko, you have the floor. Honorable Ndele, let's just allow this to... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you were paid in January 2016. Then they kept January 2017. This is January 2018, but nothing is happening. No fencing, no clearing of the ground. Uh, where is the five million point something? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, like I explained, we did part of the works that could not be quantified. Uh, the, may I be allowed to say there is no truth in that, Mr. Chairman? To date, ZPC's exposure is on, on average 1.8 million, but on the 20th, we're submitting a geotechnical survey, which is going to be about 600,000. And then, uh, we, when we finish the fence, that's another 550,000. That would be yes. You see, you cannot, you cannot choose to respond to issues that we've gone past. It's pretty clear. The intervention of ZPC, according to us here, which is evidence, is that you have felt. So we now understand why they've come in, and we don't, we don't know why they've not, they are still accommodating you. We, we will call ZPC before us again to say, how can you then have an addendum why don't you just terminate this whole arrangement and have ZPC do it? Because clearly it has failed. We cannot sit here and say that this project is going according to what was agreed. Clearly it has failed with the numerous answers that you are giving and where you are failing to think give. So this is critical for us to understand that. And the intervention of ZPC is timely, is critical, and I think they must now go ahead. And we now must ask them, what role do you still have to play in this? How many addendums are they going to have in this whole contract? Yes, Honorable Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You have already taken my words. There, there is not much to deal with. No more lullabies here. We would, this country has to move. If no more phone calls are happening, so the project is in flip-flop. Those phone calls which were coming, they have been cut. So the contractor is now in trouble. So we must look for genuine contractors. And I also want to add on top of that, Comrade Chair, uh, apart from a need, you could achieve five Varambi Varipo per site in Uganda. Can a Varamba Varipo equal Hino? Jaguriva Gutimumu, Museti PC Machimum, Kunavan Varutoro Man, Ichida Way and the Gunaji Vibo at Chichao. So, Gaz Chimbo means what you will visit PC. Gavati Tauri is a Kai Tachajis. Maria Vagapaji Vibe, Vagampa Marie. Since day, I think I think that that has been noted. Honorable Honorable Chachacharisa, I'll come to Honorable Mklang and then Honorable Nduna and Joe. Honorable Chachacharisa, Chachacharisa, you had your your hand up. Thank you, Chair. Mine is not a question. It's just a a recommendation, Mr. Chair. I think we have had enough of Mr. Chivai. Let him bring what he, uh, he, he said he will bring or to give to Chio. For the time being, I don't think he has, not, he has new things to offer us. So he might as well leave and we bring in the TPC. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Honorable Nduna. Oh, thank you, um, Honorable Chair. Um, Honorable Chair, my uh, line of thinking is um, around the issue of uh, uh, Mr. Chivayo coming in at the same time with ZPC because it is um, a crime to prevaricate according to the standing rules and orders. Um, you can be protected for the information that you give. 
um, which is uh, genuine information. If you prevaricate, you'll be charged with contempt. Uh, would you care to come in at the same time with ZPC to see the left from the right so that it is known who is telling the truth in terms of whether you are still on site or not on site? Because there is contempt of court that can befall either of you after prevaricating because you are on oath. And then the last thing that I want to suggest, Honorable Chair, um, uh, Mr. Chivayo, you can also take the water on the right. You can also use it. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, in me, I'm worried, Chairman. Ne my try and which one, Mr. Chivayo. Contract to Pawaka Pua, Ngua Jinji, Taiwa Wana Sterek, Chavo, Panga Parpa, social media. Honorable members, can we please have one, uh, one committee meeting? Thank you. Right. Varipa social media, Honorable uh, Mr. S. Chivayo. Chavo Wanga Chagavan were influential, including the former first lady. Mm. At his duty, Panga post social media. Wango wa chiposta, wa chitra udotiku wa varati zaudu, chivani simbara kanyanya ere hapa, vari untouchable. Pa wango wa chita, joshua shora tiza, kapu wazi kachizu, uta wala udoti, basaraka tanga, maybe last month after a new dispensation. So I don't really understand uchincha ya kachiti kapu. Chawe yanga ere ui Facebook, nechi, nechi. So I don't know, tiko, Mr. Chifai, wanga tita urira kutiko, Sorry, Chair. I, I need to not contempt of uh, court, but contempt of uh, parliament. I, I, I need to correct that. Contempt of this august gathering here, which includes me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable. I think these are some of the comments which are coming through. Okay. Uh, the aspect of, of social media is, is, is something that you will probably give us as just a party shot and conclude. Thank you, Chair. Just, just, just uh, two quick ones. Firstly, uh, maybe, Chair, you allow the, 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 uh, the lawyers maybe to say something. Uh, and secondly, through you, Chair, I just want to ask uh, Mr. Jivayo. Uh, what is your relationship with um, SK Moyo? Because I understand he calls him father, father, something like that. If you can just explain to this committee, just like what you explained, your relationship with the former first family, can you also explain to this committee your relationship with SK Moyo? Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Chem. I Unfortunately, can I just answer these? Because that's not in your image. <laughs> the first one from the honorable member. Um, about the con I have no problems with coming for a meeting with ZPC while we sit next to each other. I don't have a problem with that. And then, Mavunza Nyaye social media. Quit. Quit about social media. Kuskuti wa nwazi. We guti in India and touch a book and a guti. And batike. Taka nguita ma challenges. Taka ita. But my issues of funding ZPC were agreed with Pagureza Mari, Nangandru Mania Mania, a fundraising process. So he says, I do want to cheat you. Issue Yangayaka Sarah Kumashuri. Do you issue my pre commencement works of which they constitute three percent of the project total? Fundraising, Waka Kosha Pacho put a project, yes, is it for my China as well as Esama Sola. Do Kandangan is concentrated on who I say. Works. Then the last question was from well, uh, uh, with uh, Honorable Minister SK Moyo, we are not related and it's only speculation and conjecture to say that I call him father because I'm not related to him at all. I mean, he said... But you see, I think, uh, the, you see, unfortunately social media can destroy and this committee can show pictures of you and him clearly saying, uh, this is my, my father and this is where it's coming from. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm sure uh, in 
with the social media these days, you take pictures with any honorable, like if I bump into you, honorable Melissa, I can say, can I take a picture with you? That does not necessarily mean that I'm related to you. I'm not related to the former first family, I'm not related to the Minister of Energy or any of the other Ministers of Energy who were there. My interest was just my project, so I always made an effort to see whoever was directly involved or directly in charge or represents interest in my project. Committee. <laughs> background I'll ask the thing lawyers who are here. You represent other shishisha Can we have your input into into this? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, honorable members. I, I think, Mr. Mr. I think, Tokwe, you are free to come and sit in front. You, uh, Mr. Chiva, is too big for me to, to think, see you. <laughs> Members, if there are any members leaving without uh, seeking leave from the chairman, we'll just record you absent. All right, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and uh, honorable members. As we indicated earlier on, we act as proxies for the shareholders of Indratrek, Zimbabwe Private Limited. So just uh, to make it as simple as possible, I'll speak in the first person register. All right, I'll start by giving you a brief background of Indratech Zimbabwe Private Limited. It was uh, indeed started by Mr. Jivayo here and uh, Mr. Yusuf Ahmed at uh, 50% each in terms of the shareholding structure of this particular company in 2012. And uh, just uh, to clear the air on an issue that was raised by one of the honorable members, the certificate of incorporation was um, actually obtained by Indratech Zimbabwe Private Limited in 2012, October to be more specific. Uh, that was before all these uh, tender processes had actually begun. Right. In terms of um, one of the shareholders of Indratech Zimbabwe Private Limited, Mr. Yusuf Ahmed, whose interest we represent, I just want to make it very clear that he is an established you know, businessman with businesses not only in Zimbabwe, although he's Zimbabwean, but right across the borders, South Africa, and several other countries in the world. So he is a well-registered and well-established business person. Um, and um, in terms of commencing, because obviously they did not just start by
by um, tendering and so on and so forth and getting money from ZPC, etc., etc. There's a lot of money that was injected into this business in order to make sure that uh, this project is um, up and running and in terms of uh, holding these uh, meetings with, uh, with uh, the so-called technical partners, etc., etc., and it is our client who was um, responsible for that whole, for that funding, so to speak. Right. Um, I also wish to highlight to you, honorable members, that in 2014, Mr. Jivayo actually borrowed some money on the basis, in, he, uh, he borrowed some money on the understanding that he would uh, cede uh, the rest of his shareholding in Indratex Zimbabwe Private Limited, which he did to a company called uh, Intermediate Investments. Right. Um, so for all intents and purposes, and as things stand right now, Mr. Chivai is not really a shareholder in Indratex Zimbabwe Private Limited. Right. Now, the biggest challenge that has been there, and um, I think everybody has seen it, is that even in communicating with members of this August House, Mr. Chivayo was saying, I did this, I did that, my this, my that. He has never respected certain corporate governance issues that relate to the management of companies. And that is precisely why we are here today, because the shareholders have said, this project is not moving, we are concerned, you know, we risk our names being tainted, etc., etc., because of whatever is going on. But it's high time we take some action and make sure that things are happening on the ground. Right, we have tried to engage him on behalf of the shareholders, as you know, Obviously, there is need to restructure the board and the management of Indratex Zimbabwe Private Limited to make sure that there is progress on these uh, uh, projects of national importance. We have tried to engage the, uh, uh, Mr. Chivayo here to get some documents, etc., etc. In fact, we have asked the same questions that you are asking in this august house as to, for example, what could have happened with the monies, etc., etc. And even the shareholders themselves are none the wiser. All right. We have even approached ZPC. We have written several correspondences and said, can you please assist us with these things so that we can get this project back on track because the people who are the principal funders in the first place need to come in and make sure that there's progress. Of course, we have not registered any luck that side. But... I wish to indicate in clear and certain terms that the shareholders of Intermural Investments, in inter uh, the shareholders of uh, Indrotrek Zimbabwe Private Limited, are very much prepared to fund most of the positions that may seem to be controversial at the moment. As a matter of fact, they indicated that I must make it categorically clear that if they can mobilize and ensure that this project is up and running as quickly as possible. As a matter of fact, they've got the equipment, they've got everything that can be on the ground within a week even of this particular session, as long as they understand, of course, and I know that this is an issue that has got more to do with the company than anything else, which is why I don't want to uh, waste your time explaining that, but they've made it very clear that they are happy. Now they understand, obviously, the problems associated with this particular arrangement. And because of that, they are taking action. And this action, obviously, is in the form of effectively restructuring this board and the management. And they are mobilizing on the ground, and they are more than happy to pump out these monies that are required since they are the principal funders in the first place for Indratech Zimbabwe to be in existence in the first place. I think on behalf of uh, the shareholders of Indratech Zimbabwe Private Limited, that is what I wish to communicate to this August House. Yeah. <laughs>
can you uh, when did uh, Mr. Chivayo seed the shares? In 2014. So when he signed this, who signed the agreement, uh, the agreement for this uh, project? Mr. Chivayo has uh, basically been responsible for the day-to-day -day running of uh, Indrotech Zimbabwe Private Limited is uh, obviously a director and uh, the managing director for that matter. So he signs in his capacity as managing director, not as shareholder? No, he signs in his capacity as the managing director and a director of Indrotech Zimbabwe Private Limited. So as shareholders, were you aware of all these transactions which uh, came through the company? Right up to the commencement of the the, the, the money is that we're talking about, yes. But obviously after that, there hasn't been much uh, uh, communication and um, there hasn't been much um, transparency, so to speak. Do you say the money that has been put into this project, has it gone to the intended uh, purpose? Frankly speaking, the shareholders are none the wiser. They do not understand you know, the, the same questions that everybody here is raising are the same questions that are being raised but what they are saying is that we have got the capacity because these are Zimbabweans we have got the capacity we have got the money the balance sheet and yes they are happy to ensure that whatever it needs to be done is done what uh Okay, Honorable Chirisa, my last question to you is, how much money have your, uh, the shareholders that you represent put into Intratech? Right now they are compiling a reconciliation of the monies that they've put into debt, but we're looking at between two to three million dollars. Tajvayo, how much money have you put in Intratech? Uh, probably another two and three million are you able to so how much money maybe two to three million dollars are you able to show us proof both parties of the money that you've put into this because this is now going to what the members of parliament say is this a briefcase and if there's anybody who's put in money we want to know so by end of this week if we can get the documents uh, telling us and proof of money that has gone into this organization. Any questions from members of parliament? Yes. Uh, of the committee? Yes, Honorable Nengam. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just want to, to, to put the question to the lawyer that, uh, like what you rightly said, that Mr. Chivai is to be uh, a shareholder in 2014. Uh, as of now, uh, is he an employee as a director or, or what? In terms of currently, what connections does he have with Indrate? Currently, he is my director. My, my. Right, currently he is a, a director and uh, he is the managing director of uh, Indratech Zimbabwe Private Limited. Why did you tell us? that you were a 50% shareholder before as you took off and said you were a 50% shareholder. And now we are told you are not a shareholder, you are a managing director. What is your response to that? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The issues of shareholdings, I think, is an internal issue for Intratech. It's my word against his word. He will say, I ceded shares in 2014, but in 2015, after signing the contract, Mr. Yusuf Ahmed gave me my 50% back. And I have evidence to that effect. I have share certificate, which is in my name for the 50%. So he is a lawyer representing those shareholders. I didn't bring my lawyer. And it's a dispute that if we disagree, us as shareholders are... I just wanted to know whether a shareholder... I am a 50% shareholder, and I stand by that. Amen. Yes, Honorable Holder. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, what I just wanted to clarify, um, the, 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 the lawyer who's representing um, um, the other shareholder, 
Have you got documents regarding to the ceding of the shares to the other partner? Yes, I do have those documents. I have them with me even right now. Can you, can you, yes. Um, it looks like the two are not agreeing. Is there any court cases going between the two of you? Because we don't want it to be sub -judice. Yes, yes, indeed, there's a potential dispute that should go to the courts. And the, the session, is no, the Mr. session Mr. Yes, is not Mr. registered. Mr. 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 Yes. You cannot be, you are under oath and you keep jumping the gun. Can you switch off the... The question, Mr. Honorable Hoda, asked you, is this case before the courts, yes or no? Not that it's going to court. Is it your dispute? Is it before the courts, yes or no? Then my response was, there's a potential dispute. I said, lawyers yeah, have I been said, communicating. is this case Lawyer, before the courts? Lawyers court? have been communicating and letters have been written. What we are saying, Mr. Chivayo, I think, Mr. Chivayo, you are not understanding the consequences of this. I think we have been, we are not under, you are not understanding the consequences of what you are doing. We, we are not here to play games. We are neither here to really be having you telling us uh, things which are not true. You are under oath. I keep saying this to you, you are under oath. And Honorable Nduna warned you of prevaricating. And we have just asked you, is this matter of shareholding before the courts, yes or no? No, it's not. Mr. Toko, may you, may, you finish, uh, may you finish the committee with the documents that relate that he see the shares, and if there are any that will come, I mean, if, if the matter goes before the courts, that's different. But for now, we want to establish the legitimate owners of this entity. And by so doing, if you could forward us those documents and uh, we'll study them and make appropriate recommendations. If Mr. Jivari, you have anything to the contrary too, you are free to also submit to this committee. Yes, uh, Honorable Chairman. Mazita Chairman. In any Chairman, Bunzoangu, through you, Mr. Chairman, these are holdings. This company is company in a Marie no Shanda Dari, a Wanda Dari, an English Budanuan, Marie Nikedu, through Zimbabwe Power Company. When you want a Basar Gumira Marzidi, a Wanda Daro. Can I take a Tarisa? But she sends on the company Zagadai so. Could Nika end them buried? No one will get them a degree. When a peer department, she should wait to go with this. She should wait to go to Intratech. You have the intra-take. Pakusenza kwa mfunzo wangu ya chairman wa kusimuka. Wenda mfunzo wa jivaya kuti. Mune mosha area maga mbopara. Ineche kuhita ninyi ya zohori. Wakata azeshua. Saka buda pachena kuti. Fraud staguba. Ya. Yeah. Saka. <coughs> Wakachai wa two years. And it. But you are kutu. Jese zuza. Zuna basa. Ninda isha nuda kuhita chi. Kuhita mari. Saka. My three Maria Cho, do we have a version than a ZPC? Anyway, the discussion is with the committee. As no funga ZPC, this old thing, no funga Zoga foot. One put San Angula man, did ever get a which Corrigan or Shandan Macama nowadays. Yeah, I think uh, members of parliament, that's why you're doing such a stealing job in exposing this. If it was not for your oversight role, the country would not have known this. And probably Chero Iwo is this house because again, state procurement board is critical too. Could power no permanent tenders? One vacate us say. So it's a whole chain of people, and this parliament will recommend otherwise. Honorable Oda. Thank you, Chair. I just want to find out from uh, the lawyer where is the current uh, uh, director that he had to send you as a representative? Is he in the country or out? He is out of the country at the moment. Chichirisa, then I'll come to Honorable, um, and then we'll finish off with, uh, with Honorable. Um, you all speak, but we'll finish off with Honorable Nduna. Honorable Chichirisa. I, mean, I just want to find out from 
the lawyer, sorry, I forgot the name. Mr. Togo, I just want to find out from you the current board members, their names, and also you said you are going to appoint a new board. What do you look for in, 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 in people to become board members, the criteria that you use? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Member. Obviously, to, to the shareholders, the issues of corporate governance are very important. In fact, uh, for any organization to be functional and to deliver its mandate, corporate governance issues have got to be respected. And the manner in which the, we, the, we want to restructure this board is such that we want to make sure that there are people who have got uh, experience in areas that are relevant to projects of this sort. And that is exactly what we intend to do when we restructure the Board of Indratech Zimbabwe Private Limited. Obviously, you can imagine that a situation like this does not leave anybody unscathed, and it's not to be repeated again, and that is exactly why right now we are going to look at people who can dispense with their mandate as board members. The no, the other party did not answer. I asked the current board members, who are they, and you, you know, their background, you did not answer. May you answer that thing? In terms of the Sierra 14 that we have at the moment, the current board members of Indratrix Zimbabwe Private Limited are Mr. Wigno Jivayo, Mr. Ross Chavi, and Mr. Yusuf Ahmed. And that is what is reflected by the register of uh, directors and uh, shareholders that we have. And we have those documents here. Uh, Amen. When, when, when was the last... You seem to want more clarity. Honorable Chirisa, go ahead. I don't know. I stand to be corrected, Chairperson. These are the shareholders. And they, they are board members and managing directors and what else and what else and what else. So, uh, no, I don't understand. No, I think what you said is that the shareholders are different from directors. Okay, Mr. Jivai is a director, but not a shareholder. Okay, the shareholding was ceded, and he's a board member. You see, so that's exactly, if I'm not mistaken, that's what you're saying to the committee. That is the correct position. Uh, honor, honor, honorable Chair, just, yeah, yeah. Yes, Honorable uh, Did I hear him right when he said he did due diligence and checked with companies' registry that... Indeed, Mr. Chivayo is not a shareholder. Is he, is he, is he going to repeat that? My Honorable Ndewele, why don't you direct the question to him? You've got the floor. Yeah, I'm directing it to him, but through you, Mr. Chairman. The question, Mr. Top. May you kindly repeat uh, the question again? Yeah, my, 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 my point is... Being a lawyer, obviously, in preparing for this, you did some due diligence by way of verifying the facts that just came out of your briefcase. Did you check with companies' registry to 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 to, to see if uh, Mr. Chivayo is no longer or ceded his shares, so 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 to speak? There was no need for me to do that, Honorable Member. We are in uh, custody of all the original documents of Intratech Zimbabwe Private Limited. Any changes uh, that would have occurred, obviously, would have been done clandestinely. Uh, Just like everything else that has been happening, phone calls, if we are coming back to the initial question that I asked before teaming out, that obviously all these orders that were being given to Zesa against their will were taller than the minister. There is a force to reckon with which was higher than the minister, and we keep walking around that. That's the truth. And if Zimbabwe has to move forward, we must arrest this immediately. The new dispensation must show teeth. Obviously, this, this is a hell lot of criminality. I think, Honorable uh, Ndebele, you're correct. That's the reason why we've got the Minister Udenge coming, and then we'll get to who's taller than him. I think we are in the process 
of mind that we are leaving no stone unturned. I think you know that that is something that we have, is already lined up in him coming before us. It was you and then Honorable Chidagwa. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Chair. My question is, maybe to you, Honorable Chair, or to Mr. Tokwe, does the contract of Intertake still hold with Zimbabwe Power Company to do the job at Gwanda, given the instances and the happenings that we are experiencing today? Mr. Toko, you are the company representative. What does your contract, uh, is your contract still holding according to, to the Honorable Member Parliament? Yes, the contract uh, still holds. And as I indicated earlier on, maybe if I can just uh, expand on that. The capacity to deliver on that contract is there. Action speaks louder than words. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. My, my question to the lawyers, when did these people last held their board meeting? To be quite honest with you, Honorable Member, that is uh, some of the information that we have requested. In fact, we have got correspondences to that effect. Because we also want to find out what is going on. It's a clear case of delinquency on the part of directors and uh, management, and we are getting to the bottom of it as shareholders. Okay, for that. You know, for that, please. My follow-up question. <laughs> Did the shareholder in the without Kibai lose any money with Kibai? Is it stayed? And what does ZPC think of a company that has got this way of actually it's like company governance? And it still continues to abide by the contract rules and regulations. Answer for ZPC, but. Uh... Mr. Tokwe, can you respond to that, whether there has been any misappropriation of funds by the managing director, Mr. Chivayo? That is the exact reason why we have requested for the information that we have requested for. It is very difficult to say yes or to say no without, obviously, without the financials for Intratech Zimbabwe Private Limited. We have requested for those. Uh, yes, Honorable. Thank you, Chair. The lawyer did present to this committee um, in brief what he presented, but I just wanted to find out for the committee's sake, has he got this presentation written down in writing so that we could actually, as a committee, remain debating and going through the lines with the toothpick so that we can see if if there's uh, no, uh, all the stones are, un uh, are turned. I just wanted to find out if he's got that uh, written, the presentation mm -hmm. which he gave the committee, has he got it written down so that the committee could remain at that? Mr. Tokum, may you respond? Unfortunately, I do not have a written presentation. What Mr. Tokum said he has is the company documents. For, for Intratech, which we have said if they could be uh, uh, handed over to the committee as well. Uh, Honorable Mnengami. If, 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 you, if you think you don't have a question, you don't have to speak, Honorable Mnengami. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I'll, I'll, I'll speak in Shona. Mutuno wira kwa wakari rekera. Yes, you know, I see Sirinya Kuti Muchamira Repamberi Pedare Muchi, Tongeswa Nina Yeku Taurash Mush, Singa Fambira Nine Dare, a young Nyaye Kuti Muchamira Rina, I see Sirinya Kuti Muchamira Erekan out quit. A Mungawa Ere Ne Chishu Mukatime and Nazenu Vachifayo, Nevam. E, yeku meta mwe mashoko yeku gaziri sa jimwe shwa mato upa kudare rinwe iri shwa munga da uti munga gaziri se kuti musa so tongwa ninyaya yeku nge musi na kutaura 
chimwe chokwa di chino fungitzi kwa oti chokwa di padari rineiri. Ndiri kukupai mkana se munu api wa mkana ukuku misira kutawuru. I am trusting the honourable. Whether he has any contradiction or any problem with what Mr. Chivayo has done with regard to the presentation to the August House, has he got any challenge with anything? If ever he has, can he highlight? <laughs> 